turn with me over. I'm, like I said, I'm going to stay in the, uh, in the mode of the mountain of, the, of religion or the church. Turn with me over to Matthew chapter 7. In Matthew chapter 7, we're going to look at, we're going to look, actually we're going to come back to it in a little bit too, but right now, just to begin, we're going to look at verses 21 through 29. Now again, um, if Jesus taught it, we need to learn it, right? And I know in other churches that I have preached things and said things, they say, well, that's not us, right? They get all buckled up, you know? Well, the thing is, we don't, should never get buckled up on the Word, right? We should get, dig in deeper and say, well, okay, that, if, if he's teaching something or he's talking to somebody... I don't want to be that person. Or I want to be that person. I want to be in that situation. I don't want to be in that situation. So we need to look at it this, that way. So he says, uh, verse 21, uh, follows up a lot of teaching here. It's all a part of the, the Sermon on the Mount. He's going on saying, Now everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of the, my Father in heaven. So what he's saying is, there's people out there today, as there were then, that are saying, Lord, Lord, da 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 They're not in. They're not going in. They're, they're, not, they're, not, they're not living the life they need to live. People can get up. You hear it all the time. You hear people get up and give glory to God. Glory to God. What God are they giving glory to? Are there, or, or do they have a, a working relationship, an operating relationship with Him? It goes on in verse 22. says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, I have I not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name. Now, this, that right there, that's hitting preachers, isn't it? Am, am I right? It's also hitting anyone else that goes out in a smiley card ministry. I'm not picking on you, darling, but smiley card ministry or, or, or worship or whatever. He goes on to say, and then I will, depart, I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Verse 24 says, Therefore, whoever, says, uh, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, now that's the key, they did them or they didn't do them. What you do and you don't do is very important. As a believer, we got to remember what we do or we don't do is very important. I felt, and I, I have to tell you, it wasn't, I didn't plan the dream thing. I didn't plan on sharing those states. I sat in that chair this morning during worship. And then I started going through, flipping back through them and I got to Darlene's and I didn't plan. That was not premeditated on my part. God says, take up a, a, an offering for her ministry. Okay, we do ministries and and we're going to have times. There's going to be times. And you know what? It's amazing to me. I hope never hit none of you because I can give you more of in you more of you in here than not have on your dream. I would like to minister uh, more often outside the church and other churches. I'm thinking if you're all gone at the same time, we don't have church here. Okay, so when that day starts to open up, those doors start to open up, we'll, we'll plan them. Okay, so then we don't we don't have an empty business here, right? But when we're doing it out there. It's going to fill up in here. And I'm not saying, okay, the thing is, the doors. Don't, here's the other part about it. When you're, you, you feel called to ministry, you call, you're all called to ministry. If you feel that you're called to preach, don't kick in the doors. Let God open them up for you, okay? Let them come to you naturally. They will come to you naturally. It's like the time that, uh, uh, I think it was, did we have a, a, when we called it the Geek Conference, we had the Geek Conference up here with Pastor Jack. And after that first one, he invited you and Jeff down there to do his, those doors will open up. They'll, you'll see it happen, okay? Um, many, many times, I was doing uh, radio the first time I got asked to preach at a church. I was doing radio because, and the radio station manager at the time, Rick Hoover, said, I was at this church today, I gave him your name because I had just finished getting ordained, the whole thing, but I didn't know what I was going to do, where I was going to go. The doors will open, and that, was, that ended up being my first church. Uh, so don't kick in doors, allow them to open up naturally. He goes on to say, let me finish and go back to that. He said, therefore, whoever hears my, these, th these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that door and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock. When you, when you step into ministry, there's times, when you step into doing the ministries, and there are going to be times, there's been times, I'm sure, in, in the ministry Darlene's been doing, this that she's thought I need to shut it down because it's not working for me. It's not. It's not. I'm not. I'm running into resource issues or whatever. But the thing is, is that when the winds come in and the rains fall in, don't quit because if it's founded on the rock, it'll 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 uh, stand. But everyone who hears these things of mine and does them, 
not, does not do them will be likened to a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on the house, and it fell, for, and great was its fall. And so it, so it is, so it was, when Jesus had ended these sayings, that the people were astonished at his teachings, for he taught them with one having authority, not as scribes. When you're rising up in your ministry, when you're, when you're actually standing in your ministry, as Jesus was at that time, You're going you're gonna to operate in a knowledge level that even will astound you at times. You know? Sometimes you'll open up your mouth and it'll just pour out and you go, wow, what was that? And again, if it's recorded and you're wondering if, you, if it's recorded, it's the reason why you listen to it. It's the reason why you hear those things because you want to know what you, what, what's been said. You want to know what you've said. I listen to ministry all the time. Other preachers over and over. Kenneth Hagin over and over until my, my uh, truck's radio went out. I mean, I was listening. I had a set of his CDs in that CD can apartment where it's running over and over and over. The thing is, is we hear other people, we need to hear ourselves. I tell Debbie all the time, she'll go, how I do? Well, we do ask the both, how did how it go today? How was the off t- t- offering teacher? I said, Debbie, listen, it's, it's recorded, it's, it's online, it's on, it's on, a, it's on uh, YouTube, listen to it, hear what you're saying, and you'll know that you're teaching 40, 45 minutes, I understand. <laughs> No, I don't. I, I tease her, but I, I, I don't know about you, but I love her teaching on those in those areas because it's 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 challenged us. It's also caused some people to leave the church. I know because she started teaching. She knows it because she started teaching. When you start feeding people something they don't want to be a part of yet, they're not going to hang around. Okay. The thing is, is you can we can build this church. Build a church once. Uh, when we went there the first Sunday, we went back to that church. It was fifteen people. Within six months, it was one hundred and fifty. But they were here, and but when I started really getting it and started getting to teaching the word of faith message, it started declining. It, it started, we'll get to that later, but it's, it's, it's interesting. So, but in Ephesians chapter 4, just verse 12, um, it says this. Actually, you can do 11 through 13, but we're just going to point out verse 12. And in the New King James, it says... Um, for the equipping of the saints, it, it talks about what the, the fivefold ministry at first. It gives a, and it goes on to say, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, I took it through several different versions to see what it said. It says their resp- and the New Living Translation says their responsibility. In other words, the fivefold uh, is to equip God's people to do His work and build up the body of Christ. The message says this. Uh, to train Christians in a skill in skill serv- servant work, according uh, working within Christ's body, the church. The voice says this so that God's people would be thoroughly equipped to minister and build up the body of the anointed one. The Passion Translation says this, and their calling is to be nurtured. Their call and their calling is to be nurtured and prepare for uh, all the f- holy believers to do their work. A ministry as they do they will enlarge and build up the body of Christ now that's a that's a creation mandate because what did he tell Adam and Eve multiply didn't he uh, is actually be fruitful and multiply well that same mandate is what the pastors are supposed to be doing the the, the evangelists are supposed to be doing the the apostles are supposed to be doing the prophets are supposed to be doing. they're supposed to be coming in here putting the people, all of us, you know, when I'm sitting in that chair and I'm listening to one of the other pastors or I'm listening to a pastor on, on radio or, or, or TV, he is supposed to be taking me to a level in my personal walk with God that puts me at a new spot from where I was when I first started listening to him. I should be growing. That's the reason why the Word of God is important. Now, one other translation, uh, yeah, one, it was the Amplified, says this, his intention was the perfecting and the full equipping of the saints, his concentrated people, that they should do the work of the ministry toward building up Christ's body. My job when I'm standing here, Aaron's job when he's standing here, Joe or any other preacher in here, when Debbie said, our job is to equip you. Our job is to train you. We have a church full of teachers. And, and, and that's exactly what the, the watershed is all about. 
is that equipping, that uh, building up that has been since the beginning. Um, in, 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 in the aspect of what that passage is talking about, we've had successes in this church since we, we, we created it. First off, we've had schools. That's a training ground, is it not? Six years we had uh, LCU. Uh, most people that were with us then have some sort of uh, degree or some sort of uh, background with, with that. And there's people, we were going through pictures, as she said, and, and she pointed out, who's this tall guy in this one year we had the grad, with graduation? Gradu yeah, I got a college degree. <laughs> graduation. Um, the the, the uh, and, and I and I looked at well it was it's uh, Billy it was uh, Rachel's first husband, and he's no longer with us. He has training that will one day produce something in his life. Now I believe that once you've been trained at the level we were training at LC with the LCU stuff or Gibbs we didn't get Gibbs going to the level the LCU had as six years. But the thing is, is once people have been trained at that level, I believe that may be a time where they wander. Billy's wandering. Billy left uh, with some issues, and I'm not picking on him. I'm just telling you. You can be praying for him. I don't, I don't even remember what his last name was anymore. It doesn't matter. God knows him I, when she showed me that picture. The thing is, is that he's prepared. He's prepared for whatever's going to come at him if he'll just dig down and use it. Okay? The schools are important. I want to have... I want the school again. I want, I want us to be able to train people. Now, it's sort of hard to train people with a lot of our people who already have a master's degree. Can't get everybody having a doctorate, you know, until I get mine, I guess. And that may be a while. But and the thing is, is that you, the schools are important. Uh, the, the, the foundations class is important. As we were talking this morning, I said it reminds me when I'm sitting in that room or I go in the foundations every once on Thursday nights, it reminds me when I was in Bible college because we're sitting in there and we're, we're, having conversation over a topic that challenges us again to move to another level. And it reminds me of when I was in Bible college on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and five or six of us, something like that, there were non-traditional students. We would, we would get together for lunch and we'd sit there and talk. And, and one guy called us a Sanhedrin because we were all older and not college age and all that kind of stuff. But it was fun because, and we got, and we missed, I missed that for a while. When I graduated, I missed getting with those guys. Well, you can have that type of environment. Now think about this. Um, is it time getting ready to change? In a couple weeks? So we spring forward? Yes. Spring forward. So what does that mean? We, we lose an hour. But we get more sun. Right now? Oh, I'm supposed to be done? No. <laughs> is that what your point was? Is that a backwards combo? Well, you should be done. It's 1220 somewhere. <laughs> um, I, I guess it's better to try this conversation in the fall when we, when we gain that hour back. But it, it, it doesn't, for, for you to get here that, that 45 minutes earlier, to get here at 9 versus 10 on a Sunday morning to, to partake in that, it's well worth your time, well worth your energy to be there. Thursday nights for an hour, 7 to 8. We're out. We usually try to close right at 8 o'clock. Get here because it's a time of growth. It's a time of training. It's a time of getting you prepared for what you're supposed to be doing out there. It's not about what we're doing in here as much as it is out there. So the schools, whether it be uh, foundations, Thursday nights, or having actual Bible college, those we've done those. The quickenings, I know they're sort of fun and games now, right? You all like them, right? They're no, fun and games. But when God spoke that to me uh, in, 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 in 2016, it was like, it was that next step to say, okay, you got guys and gals in here that should preach, can preach, and so you need to give them opportunity to train them up to do what, in, in the dreams, which a lot of you have said you'd like to do. So those are, we have the special services, we have the watershed conference, we have the other conferences in Kentucky, we have the geek um, Creation Conference, Creation Con now, Creator Con. Creator Con. Um, and so we have other things going on here. Why? It's to make us better prepared to be the church God wants us to be. Again, to be the church God wants us to be. I'm reading a book. I read it years ago in Bible college, and we've had some failures along the way, too. I should say that. We've had some failures, um, and, but as I tried to l list any failures, I couldn't list them. 
I guess that's what I put it in the same box I put Debbie when she makes me mad issues. It's got that b bottom that's empty and it just goes or flushes right out of me. But the only true failure in ministry is when it comes to you and I don't doing what we're supposed to do. When we don't do what God's called us to do, that can be a, that's a true failure. When you step out and you misstep, you step out, and I'll get to that in a minute, or, or, and, and you fall to your knees or, or you, you, you gum it up, that's not a failure, guys. That's just an a opportunity to succeed at the next level. When I was in the insurance business, we had a, a thing that we carried every, every day with us. Had our inside, you list all your prospects. But on the front, there was three little boxes or so. And one of the boxes was how many appointments, how many people you saw that week and, or that day, and then how many appointments you had that day, and how many sales you had that day. Well, now that when you have that ratio of appointments to sales, first off, they go back to how many people you're seeing. You've got to see more people to have more opportunities to talk to them, to have more opportunities to sell. But the when you first start off with sales, you don't necessarily have a lot. You may see like 30 people and not have any sales that day. Well, you're either fudging numbers or you're really bad right now. Okay? And so then, and it gets better. Then pretty soon you get down to where you can go almost a, I got to the point where if I went to an interview, I was going to sell it. I knew, I knew my product. I knew who I was. And that's how, that's where I was at that level. The thing is, is that when you start tracking, I didn't sell. Well, they would ask you, the sales manager asked you, what did you say to these people? Because inside he had to show the, well, I talked about this, that. He said, well, did you try this? See, it's a matter of tracking the, the, the how many no's does it take for you to get a yes was the whole issue. And you would learn how to knock out those no's to get, and to build your yeses up, okay? So that's what we need to do here with things like that, too, in our own walk with God. Only failure that you can have in your walk with God is to not do what he's asked you to do. That's a failure. Everything else is like a learning process. I'm reading a book, like I said a minute ago, I read years ago. It's called Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire. And there's a quote out of it I want to read. It's on page 23, and it's a, a, uh, and, and of it, so you can have a page 23 moment like I did. He says this, Jim Symbolist says this, and he's the pastor of the Brooklyn Tabernacle. I despised, I'm sorry, I despaired at the thought that my life might slip without seeing God show himself mightily on our behalf. I think that's every pastor's despair. What if I stand before God, my life has passed, and we never saw God move? We're going to get to it in a moment what I'm talking about. That should be every Christian's thought. What if I slip into heaven and I haven't accomplished what I could have accomplished here? And, we, and, and I think part of the, the, the issue when we get to heaven is we'll see the things that we could have done, the things we could have had. Now, we like to report on the ones, all the people, because we talk about this with the base program. There's a lot of people out there that all of us have touched, we've never seen, don't know their names. We've touched them because of what we've sowed into it. There's a whole lot of people in Ghana. There's people in Belgium. There's people like that. There's other places that Pastor Jim went, Pastor Callahan goes, that we're touching their lives because we're sowing into their ministries, okay? When you sow into Kenneth Copeland, the church, we, we as a church sow into Kenneth Copeland every month. We as a church sow into, into, into uh, Jesse DePlanis every month. We as a church uh, sow into these different places, Billy Brim, people that I know are out there doing a mighty work of God and we're sowing. So wherever they're going, our money's going with them. Our church is going with them, okay? But there's going to be a time where we say, okay, I don't want to slip away. I don't want to leave this earth today not having done everything that I believe God's want me to do for you, okay? He goes, I, so I thought, well, that would be really sad. And I, as I read it, I thought that would be really sad for that to happen. Would it not be sad? And we get to heaven, there's no tears, but it's still sad. I, I wonder how many Christians went to heaven already that they've already experienced that. That was some, just some of my thoughts, okay? And why does it happen? Turn me over to Deuteronomy chapter 11. Now, in Deuteronomy chapter 11, Deuteronomy, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of good stuff in there. In chapter 11, verse 13, we're going to start there. We're going to work our way through most of the bottom half of this, this chapter. Uh, and verse 13 says, And it shall be that if you earnestly obey my commands, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God, serve Him with all your heart and with all your soul. Um, then I will give you the rain uh, for your hand in this for your land in this season, the early rain and the latter rain, that you may gather your grain, your new wine and your oil. And I will send grass upon your fields and livestock, so that you may eat and be filled. If we're doing what, if we're doing what we're supposed to do for the kingdom, He's going to provide for us a whole lot of 
stuff. Is that not right? We talk about his prosperity, but he's telling them, as he says, look, he says, I'm going to provide the rain for your land. What's your land? What is it that is vital to your success? What is it? Okay, it may be, uh, I know Vince prayed for a long time. I remember when he initially opened up the prayer on a new car. At that time, I don't think he had a car. Um, you ha- he, was, he was praying for a car, praying for a car. Then he got that truck, the red truck. And he had it, you had a long time, right? And he, had, and he was excited. He had that truck. He likes pickup trucks. I like them now, too, that I got one. It's, it's fun to drive. The thing is, is that... He, and, then, and then he started... Okay, the pickup truck started wearing out. Well, now he's got... He needs a new vehicle. And what's God do? He opens up the windows of heaven. Why? Because Vince is, is, is steadfast to what he does. I'm not... I mean, pick all of you, but I'm just going to use him. You know, he says, I'm going to pour out the latter rain on your land in its season. And the early rain and the latter rain, that you may gather the grain, your new wine and new oil... And he said, I will send the grass. He said, in other words, he said, I'm going to provide for you these things that you have need of. Uh, new refrigerator yet? Rob told us on Thursday night that the refrigerator is not working. Um, Joe, did you the one tell him how to do it, how to fix it? He said, drill small holes in the freezer and all the cooler will drop to the refrigerator. <laughs> Rob says, my luck, I'll hit the Freon tube and it won't nothing work. <laughs> the thing is, is that there's a new refrigerator coming, right? There's a new refrigerator coming because, because they have need of it, okay? Um, fortunately, right now, the weather isn't too bad until, what, this middle of this week, and it's a little warmer, but they can put it on the back porch if you need to put it on the back porch, whatever. You can put, thing is, is you, you work, but God has a plan for their new refrigerator, doesn't he? He has a plan either to provide them with the, the sources to get it or for it to just show up on their doorstep, amen? thing is, is... Is it, it's there. It's already in the move towards them. Am I correct? So he says, I'm going to provide. But why? Why is he going to provide? Because it shall be, it shall be, if you earnestly obey my commands, which I command you today, and love the Lord God with, and serve him with all your heart and all your soul. He says, then I'm going to do these things. So our first step in that is to do what? Is to love him with all our heart and all our soul. Then he comes back and provides what we have need of. Amen? Verse 18 says this. Therefore you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart and on your soul and bind them as a sign in your hand and they shall be frontlets between your eyes. You shall teach them to your children speaking of them when you sit in your house. Probably if there's something that we didn't do enough of and we just maybe took it for granted. Well, we're in ministry. We go to church every time the doors are open. Um, Literally every time. As a matter of fact, when I was the associate pastor at East Prairie, I was home. I was in the church every day of the week, except for Saturday, and that was if there wasn't a meeting. Um, but I don't think we spend as much time as we could have with our kids. If you've got small ones, or you've got little ones around, you've got grandkids, spend time reading the Bible stories to them. Spend time um, challenging them uh, to learn a verse of the Bible. Don't to be a long verse. Start them out short. Jesus wept. Okay? <laughs> start... start. That one I know. I don't know where it's at, but I know it's there, right? Is, uh, huh, what is it? He already taught his kids. John eleven thirty five. Uh, the thing is, <laughs> the thing is, is that you learn. Let them learn. Teach them the word. He says. So we, when you do it in your house, he says, uh, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up, verse twenty, and you shall write the, write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. That you, I think it's like I think that's really like bumper stickers. And he's like, he's got bumper stickers around him. <laughs> I said that for Rob because as I read, I thought, I got Rob. Let's see, he doesn't like bumper stickers. Um, that your days and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give them like the days of heaven on earth, like the days of heaven above the earth. In other words, you want your kids to prosper, you want them to grow up in the, in the, in the greatness of God that God has planned for them then teach them the word of God. And when you're doing that, what you're doing is you're multiplying both of your lives as days of heaven on earth. Verse 22 says this. Is that where I want to go? Yeah, 22. Uh, for, you carefully, for if you carefully keep all of these commands which I command to you to do, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to hold fast to him, then the Lord will drive out all these nations from before you. That, let's stop right there. What are the nations? What are your nations that are coming against you? Uh, debt. Uh, illness. Um, what other nations could be out there? Unforgiveness. Uh, lack. Huh? Relationship. 
What others? These are the nations that are going to be driven out from you when you do what you're supposed to do. They're not going to be a part of your life anymore. And then the Lord will drive these nations out from before you and you will dispose greatness and, and you will be dispo, dispossess greater and mightier nations than yourselves. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads, think about this, shall be yours. So I'm going to start treading. I says it's, we're supposed to start stomping on those things, right? So if, if debt's coming at you, then you step on it. Wherever your foot's at, it's gone. Well, it's still there, Pastor. No, it's gone. You speak faith. Vince taught on that this morning. You proclaim the word of faith out over that debt. You proclaim the word of faith out over that car that's, that's messing up. You pray, proclaim the word of faith out over that refrigerator. You proclaim the word of faith out over whatever it is, and you see it move, you see it change. He said, from the wilderness in, in Lebanon, from the river to the uh, river Euphrates, even to the western sea shall be your territory. Now, what is your ter what territory do you want? He's telling them specific parameters in the Old Testament here of what the nation, can ha nation of Israel can have. He opened up the floodgates for us, beloved. He opened up everything for us with Jesus. He opened up the whole thing. He says, but for you, nation, the, so what is your territory? What's the territory you want? He goes on to say, no man shall be able to stand against you, and, and the Lord your God will uh, put to dread, put, will put the dread of you and the fear of you on all the land where you tread. Just as he has said to you, behold, I set before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing of blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you today and the curse if you do not obey the uh, commands of the Lord your God but turn aside from the way which I command you today and go after other gods which are not which are not known you have a choice life's a choice every one of you in this room today got up this morning and made a choice everyone that's not here no nah, I'm not picking on Rob and Gail I'm not picking on Rob and, and Kim or I'm saying there's other people that are supposed to be sitting in these chairs with you. But they made a choice this morning. Well, let's go eat breakfast. Well, get up early and eat breakfast. Well, let's go for a jog. It's nice out today. Got the wind at my back. If you're running the right, you're running the right direction. <laughs> if you're not running the right direction, you got, you're in a headwind. And it's going to take you a while. The thing is, is that, you know, you, you get up, you make a choice. I told Debbie, she tried to wake me up at like, uh, she was up at five this morning. She slept in. So I, I got up too, and I, I went back to bed. I said, get, get me up later. And she said, what time? She came in a little bit later. So what time are you going to get up? I said, I don't want to get up. You know, 10, 11, 12 o'clock. I don't care. That's good. No, I didn't really say it. But there, you know, it, I had to make a choice. I could say, nah, you know what? One of the other guys can preach today. Maybe we'll move the quickening. I'll just stay here and sleep. You know, and the only reason I'm not here in church is because we're traveling, Right? The only reason you're not in church is because you're, you're out of town or you're working, you know. The thing is, is that it's a choice for us to get into the kingdom presence. And we do that by being together. And that's what makes the church strong. That's what makes the church strong. <coughs> Acts chapter 2, verse 2 says this. And suddenly there came a sound of a, from heaven as a mighty, uh, as a rushing mighty wind. Suddenly. Now what's going on in, in Acts chapter 2? They were gathered together in one place in one accord, right? And that's what it says before. They were there together in one place in one accord and believing and praying and seeking God. And there came a mighty rushing wind. Now, the Passion says this. Suddenly they heard the sound of a violent blast of wind. Now, about 5 o'clock this morning, we had some wind, did we not? And I'm thinking as I'm laying there, it woke me up because I kept hearing, I think, well, this is not blown off our roof or whatever, you know, and off of a limbs off of a tree out front because I parked my truck in the driveway. I didn't want to come out with a smashed windshield or something. The thing is, is that is that is is that that went through my head. I didn't speak it out till just now, and I wasn't I wasn't claiming it. Okay, but the, the, does do those things come through? Oh, wait a minute, you hear the, But when you if we were sitting here today and we're in one accord and we're praying and we're seeking God with all we've got in us, and I'm not going to tell you that that's not going to happen someday where we just come in here. So we're praying today. There's no no sermon unless God delivers it today i'm not i'm not preaching we're praying and we're going to spend the whole six hours praying you know thing is is that is that that w i want to hear that blast of wind i want to hear that roar of the wind 
I want to hear what they heard on Pentecost. I want to hear that. We need, we need that fresh wind. We need that fresh fire right now. But how does it happen? Acts chapter 2 verse 1 says, And they were there in one accord in one place. We're in one accord in one place here today. I go into, I hear foundations. I hear the, the, the connectedness. I hear as people start coming in, you guys start joking around with one another. You talk, we're here in one accord in one, in one place all the time. Ecclesiastes 11.4. But what stops it? Ecclesiastes 11 floor in the new 11 4 and the new living translation says this Carly farmers who wait for the perfect weather never plant we're getting ready to see farmers out in the fields here real quick in another couple three weeks hey, well I guess it's a little bit longer than that so in March they're going to be out there, right? And you're going to have to watch. I, I like this new signs out where it says, uh, start seeing motorcycles. They say, start seeing farmers. How can you miss them? <laughs> the equipment they drive on the road takes up both lanes. You know, it's not like this little bitty tractor they're driving out there anymore. They got, they got some equipment, right? They hit that with your car. Your car's done. It doesn't hurt the tractor, but your car's done. He says, but we're going to see them out there in the fields. But they're waiting for the perfect way because you'll see them out there day and night. You see them out there in the rain. Whatever they can do to make sure their equipment works in that, in that mud, they're going to be out there. But if they, they can't wait for the perfect weather. And he goes on to say this. If they watch every cloud, they never harvest. You, what, is, what is that saying to us as ministers of the word, as prepared people to teach the word? We can't wait for the perfect time that we think it's the perfect time. We step out in the rain. We step out in the sunshine. We step out and, and plant the seed. We step out and harvest the harvest. Amen? We do it because God's instructed us. Well, you know, God, I don't think I'm ready yet. I just don't know if I'm ready yet to do it. I remember when I got asked to go to, that, to Mapleton Church the first Sunday. I went through and I'm making my first sermon out. And I used to number my sermons. I got number one. Or all, I had them for years. I don't think I have them anymore. But it's like... And it's like, I'm writing, I'm writing it all out. And I get there, and then they've got a Christian school. And it intrigued me, because my kids had gone to Logos here in town, and this, that, and the other. And, and I just started talking to them. I, I didn't touch a note on my first sermon. And it's like, it's like we just, you just, I, I had to step out. I was scared. Wanted to just walk back out there. Oh, God, I was, all, I was on, the, on the outside, man. I'm okay. I'm good. You know, I've been in business. I know how to handle the, the fear outwardly, but inside, I'm like, I'm just shuddering. I'm just like, huh. it's like, you know, it's like, uh, uh, Darlene would ask her to come up. Come here, Darlene. I know what happened to Darlene since I said that. <laughs> it's not a quickening this week. <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying? You can't wait for it to feel good inside of you. You can't wait for that. You can't wait for that perfect moment because the only perfect moment the perfect moment is when you step out and do it next time I ask her to come up she goes oh yeah I'll take some more money <laughs> that's when you hit her with the wiggle <laughs> Rob and I think a little bit alike sometimes not much but with a little bit <laughs> um, For those of us that weren't with us in the beginning, I wish Pastor Rick, Rick was here because he could. He 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 and I, from the beginning, most n most of the rest of you were not with <coughs> us. Well, I'm Carly, but you don't know this story. But S P Pastor Rick, when this this church was birthed out of a church board meeting of another church, you know, sort of know that. But what happened was that board meeting happened. I may tell you some stuff you already know, but that board meeting happened. And what happened was there was a board meeting before that board meeting. And I had long before God says put Rick on that board as my mole. <laughs> well, that's what I thought. <laughs> I said, Rick, I wish he was here. And he'd go, yeah, yeah. He called me up. They had a board meeting. We have board meetings on Monday. And I think I was out of town the previous week. They didn't invite me to that board meeting anyway. It was on a Wednesday or something like that. And they had had it at somebody's house. So Rick calls me up and says, hey, I just want to let you know they had a board meeting last Wednesday. They're going to be dealing with you about the uh, uh, communion because I had moved communion to the, to, to the end of the service versus the beginning. And um, he, uh, I said, okay, no problem. I said, well, here's what I want you to do because I'm not budging. I know I heard God. I know we're supposed to have it the right that place at the service. I said, so they may fire me, so we have to find a place. That I, I, and I started counting numbers in my head of what people will come with me, what people won't, <laughs> okay? 
Because it, it, that's just, that's, I'm sorry, that's just who I am. I'm a bean counter sometimes, okay? It's like, Debbie says, don't worry about who's not here. Remember the ones that are here. Okay, I'll quit counting. <laughs> but thing, I know, but you, as a pastor, you count your sheep. You do. You just, I was just, just the, the nature of the business, okay? So, Aaron, every time you miss, I know you're gone. <laughs> Um, the thing is, is that, so we're in that board meeting, and we go through the whole thing, and, and finally, um, at the very, one of the, one of the elders, shouldn't have been an elder anyway, but one of the elders, so I, I said, well, God, God told me to do it like this, so he said, I don't think you ever hear from God, I, I pushed my Bible to him, and said, yeah, well, show me where I'm wrong, <laughs> that's sort of a bad moment, but you know, hey, uh, everybody has their moments, the, the thing is, is that, is that by Friday, I figured they'd fire me, but by Friday, every board member was gone, Every board member had sent me a resignation and they left us the church, the church we had had in Mapleton. I mean, Metamar. And the, the thing is, is that at the time of that going on, I knew inside me it was time to birth the church. I knew that that time with uh, uh, Prairie View uh, Fellowship, was that was Prairie View Christian Church, was done. I knew at that point in time, I knew it was coming. God showed me it was coming. We had just, uh, not too long before that, gotten totally affiliated with Pastor Callahan and Grace Ministries. I knew that, I was hoping those people would come along, that we could take them and, and get them to where we needed to go. But I knew it was finished. And so when we, 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 uh, we moved on. So, but God will speak to you if you listen to what he's saying to you. And he'll start opening up the door. Not all the way. But he'll open up a crack. He'll open a little bit more. And you just got to keep pushing it. You just got to keep walking through. Keep. And he's on the other side of that. He was on the other side of that Monday night board meeting. I didn't know it at the time. I was believing for that. I remember talking to Pastor Callan the next day. And he says, well, I, he said, how you doing, Reverend? I said, not so well today. There's all, they've all quit. He said, well, that's okay. Well, it's not, and we'd like to have them all stay. But, you know, hey. And, uh, but they left you your bu- the building? <laughs> That's what he said. I said, yeah. I said, but he goes on. So we have to just keep moving forward. The body of Christ, the church has not moved forward in a long time. Now, they're moving forward some right now. Um, I saw uh, recently, read something recently, where the, 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 the Methodist church is, is toying with a whole lot of new ideas when it comes to uh, ministry out there. Support and abortion. Uh, big time. There's ministers, there's other ministers out there say that abortion is of God. These are mainline ministers. These are mainline churches that are starting to crumble. What we have to have is we have to know what we first believed in. Now I'm just going to take you just real quickly down my first belief, okay, to get to where I'm going with all this. This this bores Debbie because she's seen it, she's lived it, but um, when the kingdom is a new fire in us, the kingdom is a new fire that will light you up. Do you remember when you first started believing in the Lord? Now, I understand Dina and Anita. It's been a long time ago. Wow. Wow. <laughs> what I meant was you were very young. <laughs> what I meant was you were kids. Never mind. I don't know what I meant. But I, I do know that, that sometimes, but if, if you, sometimes when you receive the Lord as a young child, you have to think a little bit. But I guarantee this. I can remember memories... Who does? Dina. Dina? Really? There you go. How old were you? Six. So you can remember back to six, right? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Dina. <laughs> there was a party line. Help, uh, somebody's still on it. Uh, <laughs> We all had those. But I can, you know, the thing is, 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 that, is that I can remember back when I was about five or so, uh, four or five, maybe in six, my Aunt Ramona took me to high school up here uh, for a home ec day where you took kids in. I remember standing in the hall. Or not, I wasn't in the hall. I wasn't standing there. She was holding me in. We are in the hall with all these pretty girls. I, I sort of liked that, you know. Um, and, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean at like six. <laughs> six. At three. Oh, at three? I was at three? Yeah. He took six. But I rem- But if, if I the three really. Wow. See, that's even better yet. Three years old. I know that 
but I know that memory. And I challenge people all the time to remember back. Remember back at least to when you got saved. Remember that day. Why? Because your life changed forever. And a new opportunity came. It was a new. For me, I had to fire me to, to help people to do things and be a part, uh, to help change the world, as my part of the world as much as I could. Well, that fire just changed course and changed direction. It, it had a new attitude with a new, de- new direction to it. It had a new point of, of th- uh, a point that would be my new destination. I didn't know that. It would be, but even when I got saved, when that fire lit in me a whole new way, I didn't know I was going to pastor. First off, I didn't like talking in front of people. First off, I, but the, thing is, 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 the deal is, is that we, that which was in you that day, that fire has a need to be burning still today. And I, I know it is in you guys, but the key is, is that we have to continue to be. So how do you get to where you want to be? How do you get to know where your ministry is supposed to be? Well, just real quickly, before I get to my, my, my third and somewhat final point with the scriptures, is that you volunteer. You volunteer. I volunteered to sing in the choir. No, I'm not singing here. There's a lot of people. Well, we, we don't have a choir, but we could have. You know, we could have a choir. What's a choir? Two or more people. <laughs> That's a choir to me, okay? The thing is, because that two is a duet. So it's like, um, but so you got to, but I started singing the choir. And then I was involved in coffee house ministry, both here in Morton and in Peoria, with uh, Pastor Donnie Williams, who is pastoring up where David Shreves used to be. Um, I went to a small group outreach in Tremont one time that I heard about to just searching out, looking out. What does God want me to do? What does he want me to do? Um, I, I um, tried to start a newspaper called Salt and Light Publications. I even got the business cards still uh, somewhere around the house. And then um, I, did a, I did radio, both WCIC and WVEL. Now, I led a small group or two along the way. I taught a Sunday school class. I was a youth pastor for a very short time. I want to do that again. But the thing is, is that when I'm, why am I telling you all that? To, to say what I did? What? No, I just, I still work with, what's interesting, I still work with you all the time. But all those journeys, all those journeys were to get me what I'm doing today. It was things along the way that, okay, well, I did that for a while. Well, that's not really, I guess that's not really it. Did that for a while. And I could have got discouraged. Now, the only time I got discouraged is when I, when I lost the churches because I thought, well, I missed God. I must have missed God. I must not belong in the ministry. This must not be something that I'm supposed to be doing. Well, the thing is, is that you, you move forward and there might be a stumble or two. But you get back up and you keep moving forward. You keep moving forward. You keep moving forward. And all of a sudden, the door opens that the door you're supposed to walk through totally and on the other side of it is your destiny. And so we have to get a hold of that. The church, as a rule, is not there yet. There needs to be a fresh power and a fresh courage in all of us every day. A fresh power and a fresh courage. And in John chapter 21, verse 3 says this, And Simon Peter said to them, Now this comes after Jesus has been uh, dead. He's been crucified. He's dead. He's rose again. He's met with the disciples at this point once. He's met with them and even proved to Thomas that he was who he was and said he was. But Peter says, and this is a discouraged statement, I'm going fishing. You know what happens when we get discouraged? We go back to the things that we think were what we were supposed to do. I remember when I went to, uh, uh, had the church of Mapleton. After I left there, I helped plant a church, faith fellowship, and then went from there. I worked, worked in a counseling area for a while. And then after a while, I went back into business, went back in the insurance business. And then I got called, after I had a really good job with the insurance company, I got called into ministry again, Lighthouse in East Peoria was there for about three years full-time, and all of a sudden that imploded on me. What did I do? Went back to the insurance business. I was still going to school, though, and the, the thing was is, is as every time my f- ministry failed for me, I go back to my crutch. I go back to that one thing that I'd always done since I got out of the Army, the one job that I'd always had, and it wasn't what I was supposed to be doing. See, Peter said, I'm going fishing, because that's what he knew. He knew he was good at it. And he didn't know what else to do right here. So what happens is they go out fishing, and they go out fishing. Are you guys there in John 21? Let me go there too. Because if you look at this, you see, he said, I'm going fishing. And then verse, um, 
And they said to him, we're going with you also. Well, you know, when you get down, we talked about this a little bit this morning. You come in here and you see somebody that looks like they're having a bad day. Don't go up to them. Oh, it looks like you're going to have a bad day, Aaron. Man, you okay, man? You all right? Is it okay? And then all of a sudden, Aaron's, I got somebody to talk to. I'm unloading. I'm going to tell them every wrong thing that's ever happened since I was two years old. And I'll make up some along the way. So you, you, when you get down and you start discussing, and then so I'm going to walk away and I'm going to feel bad too. I'm thinking, he's not as old as I am. I'm sure I can top those stories. So the thing is, that, so they said, we're going with you because they got along. Now we're going to, we're all, they go out fishing all night long. They come in and Jesus is standing on the shore. He says, you guys got anything you caught? No, we're empty. Now they're supposed to be good. They're, they're out there all because the, they got out there fishing. And they're all telling each other the bad, sad stories. Jesus is gone. Now what are we going to do for three and a half years? Da, 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 da. They didn't catch a thing. Jesus says, take and throw it on the other side. Go back out. And they hauled it in. They hauled it in. What leads into it next is then, after in the case of Peter, fishing was his crutch. It was his, it was his insurance business. But if you look at below, um, uh, what happened was in Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, verse 14. Well, let, let, me, let me do this first before I get there. If you look further down in John 21, all of a sudden Jesus has that conversation with Peter. Do you love me more than these? He's talking about the fish. Do you love me more than fishing? Do you love me more than these fish? And he goes on, yes, feed my sheep. Tend my sheep. Do you love me? Yes, feed my sheep. He was getting through to Peter what he's supposed to do. What you're supposed to do. Sometimes some of us are a little bit thick in the head. We don't take it right away. But if you look at Acts chapter 2 verse 14. All of a sudden Peter's got a hold of it. But it's after they're in the Pentecost. The mighty rushing wind has come in. And the tongues of fire have lit over on the top of them. The Holy Spirit has descended and, 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 and engulfed them. And in verse 14. But Peter standing up with the eleven raised his voice and said. Men of Judea and all that are in Jerusalem. Let it, let it be known to you. And heed my words. Peter's stepping into his destiny right there. Peter's stepping in. To where he was supposed to be. He had fresh power and fresh courage on the day of Pentecost. Uh, Psalm 1 says this. Peter goes on and he, and, and he went on and he taught and he taught and he taught. And became very courageous. Psalm 1 verse, verses 1 through 3 says this. Bless is man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor stands in the path of sinners. Nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And his law and his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree. Listen to this. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither, whether he do, whatever he does shall prosper. Whatever, when you step where you're supposed to be, when you're planted where you're supposed to be, that water, the Holy Spirit, is going to make sure you prosper and do what you're supposed to do. It says what to say there. And he shall... And what, what to, whatever he does shall prosper. You want prosper, and, and most all of you in your dreams, I want to be prosperous. Um, Jeff says I want to be filthy rich, but you know we, we know Jeff, right? Um, he doesn't really say that, but he, I think he does say abundantly wealthy. <laughs> okay, if, if that's your goal, you got to step out and do it. You know, if. When I use when I use points of my past, I'm not I'm not saying they ain't anybody else. I'm just saying what happened to me. Um, when I got saved, um, I remember a conversation with my dad sitting out in front of their house, and I lit up a cigarette. He says, "You still smoking those nasty things?" I'm thinking, "Man, you smoked for a hundred years those non-filtered camels." Don't tell me. I said, "Yeah, I like the taste of them." Now this is one month before I quit, because he said. He said, he said, I'm going to pray that just anything happens. I'm thinking, what kind of prayer was that? Anything happens to so you, will quit. But I quit. But when I quit, it wasn't I just, well, I want to quit. When I quit drinking, it wasn't I just wanted to quit. I had to, I had to step out and do it. If you want to quit overeating, step out doing it. Don't do it no more. You want to quit, you want to quit doing all these other You want to... Go to bed at 10 o'clock? Go to bed at 10. Don't go to bed at 11 o'clock anymore. Go to bed at 10 o'clock. You want to get up at 6 o'clock? Nobody should get up at 6 o'clock in the morning. Are you kidding? Yeah, but you go to bed at 7. 
The thing. <laughs> but <laughs> it's eight thirty. <8:30. laughs> She's in for a rude awakening next year when she gets very little sleep at college. The, th- the thing is, is that when you, whatever you're trying to not do no more, stop it. No, Steve saying, well, try it. No, don't quit trying. Quit trying. Just do it. Just stop it. It says, whatever you do, you shall prosper. So stop doing it. If we want to be a great church, then let's be a great church. Let's be some, let's be who we're supposed to be. You know, Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 says this. Ask, and it, sh- and it will be, and in the, in the King James says, shall be, given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. Ask, seek, find. Those are all, um, are, those ad- are those adjectives or nouns? It's a verb. A verb. Ask, it's an action word. <laughs> And I and I and I and I nicely asking would be an adjective. And I and I am and I are a writer. That's why I have editors, right, Donita? <laughs> Denise, I've read his stuff before he publishes. You know, you need to. Um, I say, hey, I'm writing. I'm writing another book, Dina. Can you read it? Yeah. Well, I'll, let's see if I got time on my hands here. <laughs> a Ask, seek, knock. All verbs. All action. You, doing. Something on your part. But if you'll do your part, it goes on to say, and it should be given to you. If you'll do your part on what you're seeking, what you're asking, if we as a church will do our part, God will respond. If the church universal does its part, God will respond. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20 says this, So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making His appeal through us. I spoke that last week. We are, are his ambassadors. We are uh, the ones responsible to get it done. We're the ones responsible. Now, I, I wanted to close. I'm just going to touch. Turn to Revelation chapter 2. I'm not going to take up much more time, but another hour or so won't hurt, right? And I, I wanted to get through this because before I got through with the churches, I didn't have time to get in last week because... It's important for us to get an idea of what we're supposed to be, who we're supposed to be as the church. You and I are the church, right? We agree? You and I have a responsibility. Sue has a responsibility, not just to Joe as, her, as, as, her, as his wife, uh, not to just hit her children as their mother and grandchildren as her grandmother. She has a responsibility to God, personally, one-to-one. But then there's ministry involved in all of our lives, you know? Um, Jim has a responsibility, not just to Karen, but to God. That can be said of all of us, okay? In this, in this passage, and I'm not going to get into it all, I wish I could, because it's so important for us to take a look at the news today and see the seven churches. To, to, when I say the news, I'm talking about the, the, the church news today. I'm not talking about the secular news, although that's there. But the church news. Reading about how the churches are changing. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to beat up anybody, but we need to be praying for the churches that are saying abortion's okay. We need to be praying for the churches that are saying it's okay to have uh, uh, coexist relationships with other religions. That's not true. That's not of God. We can, we're supposed to love them. That's how we win them. But we're not supposed to coexist with them. We're not supposed to be invited to say, okay, we're going to have... Uh, uh, um, Imam Shakibugu <laughs> come in and preach this morning. We're going to pray with them. Now, trust me, that that tribe is originated with Adam. But they don't serve the same God we do. They're not of, they're not of the body of Christ. They're not of the children of Israel. They're not they, they're separated. And they're separated, they separated with anger. Fueled by, what was his mom's name? No. Rob. The Hagar. mother. Hagar. Oh. When she got kicked out. They, they, and God told, did, did God not tell Adam, I will prosper him? Who did I say? 
Okay, Abraham. <laughs> Started with an A. It was, it was, it was close. Several hundred, <laughs> se <laughs> several hundred years, a couple hundred years off, no big deal. Uh, probably more than a couple. But the thing is, is he said, I'll, I'll bless him. I'll make him a great nation. He is a great nation, but he's not. And he forgot where the blessing came from. And, and we're, not supposed to, we're not supposed to be fellowshipping with them or praying with them. You can pray for them. We're supposed to be praying for them. We want to see them changed. We're not supposed to be fellowshipping and praying and believing with the churches that say, oh, abortion's okay. It's okay to have abortions right up to the birth. It's okay. no big deal. It's, matter of fact, it's of God. I just read somewhere today where there's another, uh, another pastor saying, uh, a, a big pastor somewhere saying, you know, there, there is, there is a, Scripture says it's okay to be homosexual or lesbian or whatever. It's, it's okay. It's good. It's all right. No problem. It's, it's in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. And they only get away with that because they have a Jim Jones mentality. Don't, you don't need your Bibles anymore. I'll tell you what you need. I'll tell you what you need to hear. That's why you bring your Bibles. That's why you bring the tablets. That's the reason why you bring your phones. Is to see the word that's being preached. To read. That's why we had it on the screen. So you see the word yourself. It's important for us individually to strengthen the body of Christ by doing it. In these seven churches... God says all of them at that time were real churches. They're still real today in what's going on in the body of Christ today. And, and I'm just going to zip through. Just a, He says, I know your works, uh, chapter 2, verse 2. I know your works and your labor and your patience and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not and have found them liars. And you have persevered and, and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, gave them all the good stuff, right? They were doing some good stuff. So nevertheless, have the, I, I have this against you, that you've left your first love. We've got to keep a hold of our first love. There's churches out there who have lost their first love. They've, they've talked all the other stuff down for years, but now they've lost their first love. The next church, uh, Sm Smyrna says this, these things, says the first, no, uh, I know your works, in verse 9, I know your works, tribulation and poverty but you are rich i know the blasphemy of those who say that they are jews and are not but are in the synagogue of satan do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer now that's not a fun verse is it do not fear those things you're about to suffer indeed the devil is about to throw some of them some of you into prison and you may be tested and you have tribulation 10 days be faithful unto death and i will give you the crown of life now he doesn't say there have something against you does he that's one of the churches he does. Now let's go on to Pergamos, down, down a little bit. Starting verse 13, says, I know your works, where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, and hold you fast to my name, and did not deny my, fa and did not deny my faith, even in the days of uh, Antipas, was my faithful martyr, who was killed among you, where s s Satan dwells. But, I have a few things against you, because you have there, because you have there those who Hold the doctrine of Balaam, who have taught uh, Balak and, and to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit, commit sexual immorality. Thus also uh, have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. He says, repent to them. In other words, they did some good things, but they have a whole list of other rough things. Again, think about the churches out today. Think about the body of Christ today. Verse uh, 18. Uh, no, I'm sorry, verse 19. I know your works, your love. He's talking about Thyatira here. I know your works, love, service, faith, your patience. And as for your works, the last are more than the first. Nevertheless, even though it seems like they're getting better, nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allowed the woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things, sacrifice to idols. I, and I give her... I give her, I gave her Time to repent of her sexual immorality, and she did not repent. So, now, there, there's just recently a big doctrine out there about, about women preachers, the mega, uh, big name women preachers, how they're going, it's not biblical, and things like We know that's not true. That's not what he's talking about here. He's talking about a prophetess of, of, the, of the enemy. Goes on over to chapter 3, uh, verse uh, 6. Is it set? No. Um, verse 3, it says, ver chapter 3, 
says these things. He says to the seven uh, spirits of God, even to the seven stars, I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Sardis. You have a name that you lie. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are already that are ready to die. For I have not found your works perfect before God. There are a lot of churches out there that are weakened to the point where they think they're alive. They got a church name on the building, but they're dying on the vine. They're dying on the vine. We can't be the Word of Faith camp cannot be that type of church. If you remember correctly, every mainline church that's out there first off started every higher education building in this country they all started back with the church training pastors and teachers to go out and do the work of the gospel as the campuses have fallen the churches are fallen that started them go on down to chapter 7 and philadelphia uh, i know your works uh, verse 8 uh, i know your works i see you have set before you an open door and no one can shut it for you have a little strength and have kept my word and have not denied my name he says, I've got the door open for you. Philadelphia is doing it all correctly. All correctly. It goes on, the last church in here is Laodicea. Uh, used to be a, there was a song by a guy by the name of Steve Camp uh, back in the 80s. It was called Living in Laodicea. And uh, it, Laodicean church, is, it, to me, is the scary one of all these churches today. I believe this is the, pretty much the church universal today. Um, it says in verse 19, I know your works and that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Um, there's so many lukewarm, the lukewarmness has invaded the body of Christ. As ambassadors to the church, as ambassadors to take back the mountain of religion we have to know the word of God we have to live the word of God we have to become its ambassador to the world amen I know that uh, the, the teach, I know teaching today is, is, is to get through a lot of stuff as, as I'm putting on paper I'm realizing okay this is, this is uh, intricate and I didn't, even, I didn't even get into it as much as I liked I liked to have about two more hours but I didn't want to hold you up from lunch and uh, the, key, the key is, and no, I didn't really, but I could do two more hours. So who's ever doing the quickening next Sunday? There's, so, there's a launch pad for it if you want it. I don't know who's doing the I do know who's doing it, but I'm not going to tell you. The thing is that... <laughs> um, the, 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 the thing is... <laughs> the, the thing is, is that we have to be about the work, beloved. We go to service, and most all of you come to every service that the doors are open, every time, no matter whether it's here or it's a Pekin, if it's a conference. But we have to do more than just be at church. We have to be the church. Amen? Teaching and ministering wherever you go. Darlene has a card ministry, a smiley card ministry. We've sowed into that. But that, you just don't work. Well, I did good today. I sowed into her smiley card ministry. I'm good to go now for a month or two. No, you get a hold of. You start asking God. Ask, seek, and knock. Well, God, huh? God, what what is it you'd like me to do today for you? And and he maybe doesn't maybe does the same, but then all of a sudden the next step is seek. Okay, well I'm going to try this. And it, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't work. But then you start knocking. Okay, I want in to where you want me to be. I want to go. And the doors will start opening. That's exactly how this church was birthed. Ask, seek, and knock. Amen? Um, next Sunday, we won't be with, next two Sundays, we won't be with you. Our hearts will be.